Phew, well, that was one heck of a trek, but it was well worth it for a view of Mount Valhalla like that. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another gear review where today I have had a chance to use the Gregory Nano 20 liter day pack, not only on this adventure, my wife has used it on a few, and really seeing and asking ourselves what is like the best value to performance that you can get out of a day pack and is this it? Because I paid about $55 for this particular pack. And so we're going to see all the nuances, all the capabilities, and if there are any limitations in this design. And hopefully by the end of the video, you can determine for yourself, is this the right day pack for you when you don't want to break the bank, but you want a lot of capability. So let's have some fun. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's dive on in. Now, one thing that I noticed right out of the gate that most packs in the size range and price point are not gonna give you is a separate dedicated hydration pouch that can easily handle up to a 100 ounce uh, hydration you know, bladder bag. And it does have ambidextrous ports and an easy clip system. So that is a really nice feature to have for those who like hydration bladders. But if you're like me and you don't really care for the headache of maintaining and carrying them, then the water bottle pockets on either side that are mesh with elastic collars are perfect for your 32 ounce or 48 ounce Nalgene's can easily handle those type of diameters and your small, smaller, narrower water bottles like a smart water bottle, it can easily accommodate and those are ambidextrous on each side, which makes it perfect for my hard side hydration system to give me all that hands-free capability of a water bladder, but none of the headache. And that's why I'm super pumped that they're today's sponsor. All right, Nate, first time out with the swig rig. What are your thoughts? It's great. Oh, I, I do not like bladders. Mine is too small and the ones I carry in my pack are just <laughs> gross and heavy and sloshy and get in the way. And guys, the reason I partner with Hardside and their regular sponsor here and part of our affiliate network at the channel is because they're a homegrown American small business coming up with solutions to problems that many of us in the outdoor community have had for years, giving us that quick access with a hose, but attached to those rigid water bottles on the exterior of our packs, opening up more space inside your pack, but also making it way easier to filter water and then refill, know how low you are, and just be able to make it more versatile. So guys, click the link in the description below this video over to the Hard Side Hydration website. And don't forget about my exclusive 10% off promo code that you can apply towards your purchase. Check out all the different capabilities, setups that they offer there, and they're innovating all the time. So check them out and get yourself some hands-free hydration with all, all the headache that a water bladder often has. Let's hit some of those juicy specs so you better understand what this pack is offering. Now, it fits a torso of 16 to 21 inches. I am on that top end, right about 21 inches, fit me well, and didn't feel like I had a kitty pack on, felt like I was able to enjoy the use of this pack easily. But my wife, who is close to that 16 inch uh, torso, she absolutely loves this pack and has basically adopted it as her summer day pack for 2023. So that just kind of gives you an idea there that it has quite a bit of, of um, body type fitting. Now the weight of this pack is 1.1 pounds. So it's not ultra light, but it is light with again, that volume of 20 liters and then a maximum weight carrying capacity of 20 pounds. I mean, if you're packing this out with 20 pounds, you really should be going with a more structured pack. For me, I'm rocking around around 10 or 11 on my adventures, my wife using less than that. And it's really best suited, I would say for right around that 10 pound uh, mark is where you're gonna probably see the most enjoyment. When you start loading it closer to that 20, it may start to fatigue your shoulders a little quicker and it'd be better to go with a more structured heavy duty pack. And then dimensionally, it's 20 inches tall, 10 inches wide, and eight and a half inches deep. Now the body of the pack is 200 denier honeycomb crypto rip HD nylon. I don't know what that means, it sounds super dope and sounds tougher than you probably would think 210 denier would be. The bottom of the pack is 420 denier high density nylon. Now I love having this mesh pocket on the exterior of the pack, just gives an extra load capability. Easily was able to accommodate my raincoat without issue. You could put a small tarp, probably two man tarp under there or in there as well, if you wanted to stuff that in there. And it's really nice and, and slim 
and low profile when there's nothing in there. So if that's not needed for you and on a particular trek, it's not this big floppy piece of fabric. It's nice and tight and helps with that little compression strap and clip up above. Now below that we have here this little tab that is designed for um, mainly bike riding and you're able to put a little blinker or reflector on that little loop. On the back as well, there are ambidextrous nylon loops that you could run a carabiner through. But sadly, there are no trekking pole or like pack axe or ice axe loops at the bottom of the pack, which is a little disappointing because I'm always carrying tripods, monopods, or trekking poles of some kind, lashing different things. And this doesn't really allow for that. So you're either gonna have to stuff them in the water bottle pockets or in that mesh backer, and it's not quite ideal. And that would have been just a nice little touch to have at least one loop for trekking poles at the bottom of the pack, just to better stabilize them when you're not using them. Now, compact day packs like this always have a tricky time navigating the backer and the shoulder straps, the yoke, the comfort level, because they are trying to hit a price point and this is a pretty lightweight pack. So oftentimes, you know, aspects are overlooked. So they're not super comfortable when you start loading them down. This bag finesses this so well. Here's the deal. On the shoulder straps, the yoke itself, you're looking at 18 inch shoulder straps from the top of the yoke to the very bottom. That for perspective is an inch longer than my 40 liter Mystery Ranch Coolie Pack. That is crazy town because that means that it gives you a lot of shoulder strap to work with. So there is a lot for particularly us larger frame people to be able to carry this very easily, but it not obstructing those of you with smaller frames like my wife. Now on top of that, what they have done is on the upper half of the shoulder strap is that matching dense um, foam, die cut foam that's on the back or that we'll talk about in just a moment. So that's where all your load is, that's where the support is, and then good structure on either side. Then it cuts that for the last half of the shoulder strap down to just a breathable mesh and then the sternum strap runners. So it's cutting some weight there, but giving you the extra density and support up on the shoulder portion where you actually want it. So that is a that, that is great to see. I mean, that, that look, seems like a much more expensive, much more technical pack that would normally do that, which means it's gonna support the load and it's gonna breathe well and it's gonna cut down on some weight. Now it has very long tracks for that sternum strap. Uh, I prefer ladder system where you detach and put it exactly where you want it, but these tracks have not been shifting. They are pretty snug. And for the price and everything else we're getting, I'm able to easily overlook that feature. And then you got those nice long straps to cinch it down and get it to where you want. This does come with a belly strap that is not removable, but this is so nice is that there is a tuck away compartment. I tend to not use belly straps on this size a pack. And it's awesome that I don't have to you know, disconnect it and then throw it in the pack. Most packs of this size range and price point would have either no belly strap or you would have to disconnect it and then throw it inside the pack. The tuck away feature is just a nice touch and adds to the versatility. Then we round back into that foam die cut backer, which is nice and dense, gives you good breathability as well, and gives you semi structure. So this isn't like a rigid polymer backer, but this isn't a structureless pack either, giving you kind of that hybrid capability. I didn't really feel any of the equipment inside, uh, but if you had really kind of odd shaped stuff, it might start to, you might feel a little bit, whereas a fully rigid polymer backed uh, day pack, you'll not only be able to carry more loads, like heavier loads, but you won't feel the equipment quite as much. So just kind of take that in consideration, but I think it's a good blend for the usual type of gear and equipment and loads that this size pack would want to be carrying. Now, obviously, as we're unpacking this pack, value is a huge factor. I, again, paid $55 for the orange variant. They have over eight different color combinations, and depending on what color and where you pick them up, you can get them from between $55 and $80. So I will have links in the description below this video over to my affiliate networks, including backcountry.com as well as Amazon. So if this design or the smaller size nanos make sense for you, always appreciate when you use those hyperlinks. And so at $55, this is an insane deal and I'm not aware of a pack with this many features, capabilities at that price point. And if it ends up being closer to the $80 price point, depending on color that you wanna go with, or as time goes on, the prices just continue to inflate. I, I've tested Mountain Smiths and Kelties and you know, Mystery Ranch. For 80 bucks, it 
I don't know off the top of my head of another model that is currently in production that is giving all of the layers of capability, organization, material build, and quality that this Nano 20 offers. Now you got a nice heavy duty reinforced grab handle and hang handle. Now the first enclosed pocket we're gonna run into is the smaller organizational pocket. It has one zipper, it's YKK. All the zippers on this are YKK, which is awesome. Uh, and a good, nice, you know, finger tassel to grab, pull open. And the inside is going to be two little mesh pockets, which, you know, are kind of fine for like dividing, I guess. Uh, and then a key keeper. It's always nice to have a key keeper on day packs. So it does have that. And you could easily get your phone, your wallet, your keys, and like two cliff bars or, you know, a headlamp if you wanted access to that or a pocket knife very easily in this compartment. Now onto the main compartment. This is where you're going to throw the majority of your gear. It's just a big dump pocket two YKK zippers that go down about two thirds of the way so that you can easily open it up, get into what you need. Now this compartment was easily able to carry for me my large, like three man, because there were three of us on this particular trek that we were doing for some of the footage, uh, med kit. It was able to carry my decked out survival kit and all my GoPro gear, as well as a few other supplies that I had. So, and I still had a little bit of space left over, which is more than enough for me and more than what most people who aren't videographers would be easily able to carry. So you should easily be able to not only have supplies for yourself, but if you're going with maybe two children, you should easily be able to have enough food for them and their raincoats and whatever inside this pack, as well as your med kit and survival kit without issue. So guys, there you have it. I am super impressed with the Nano Series, particularly this 20 liter design. And if you are in the market, either just to gift to someone or someone in the family or just for yourself, you need to get yourself a good, reliable day pack. You don't wanna break the bank, but you need a lot of different features and you want good quality. I would say that this Nano 20 is absolutely fitting the bill and I cannot recommend it enough. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. If you own one of these in the Nano series, leave a comment. Let me know how your experience has been and how it's holding up over the long haul for you. And I just always appreciate you guys coming week after week. I invite you to check out the other video popping up and to subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.